In this sixth video, we'll discuss electric actuator motors and duty cycles. As I mentioned in the first video, there's some exciting new technology developing, which is opening up new possibilities for electric actuators. We will cover this technology in this and the next video. There are two basic types of motors used in electric actuators, AC induction motors and DC brushless motors. AC induction motors power most actuators, but the technology of DC brushless motors is developing and providing new opportunities for electric actuator use in control and high modulation applications. AC induction motors are powered by alternating current. They operate at one fixed speed based on the frequency of the AC current being provided to them. So the same motor powered by 60 hertz current would operate at a faster speed than if it were powered by 50 hertz. In some cases, speed could be varied with an external variable frequency drive, which serves to vary the current being supplied the motor. AC induction motors are used on the Betis M2CP, XTE3000, and Torque Plus. DC brushless motors are powered by direct current. Now don't be confused. This simply means that DC current is used internally by the motor controller. The actuator itself can still accept line power in either three-phase AC, single-phase AC, or DC. DC brushless motors are controlled by a motor controller, which takes the power signal and varies both frequency and amplitude of the current to the motor, thus providing the ability to adjust the speed and torque of the actuator output. As mentioned earlier, this technology is advancing and becoming more cost effective for the industrial market based on unit volumes being driven by automotive and consumer products. For example, some electric vehicles and newer washing machines utilize DC brushless motors to provide variable speed. Now that you understand the two basic motor types, let's discuss performance ratings. This is an important section as it is critical that actuator, motor, and gearing be selected to match your process requirements. If underspecified, the actuator may not perform to the application requirements, but overspecifying will drive up cost without benefit to the end user in a simple application. There are three basic types of motor and actuator ratings dictated by the performance of the motor, actuator, and any external gears. The first is S2 short time duty. This may also be called on off duty or class A, class B, depending on where you are in the world. All these terms mean basically the same thing, which is a situation where the motor starts, runs, stops, and cools down. Manufacturers will state an amount of run time allowed, for example, 15 minutes or 30 minutes. While in most applications, small valves do not take that long to operate, paying attention to these ratings becomes more pertinent on, for example, a large sluice gate valve. The second rating is S4 periodic duty, also called modulating, positioning duty, or class C. Again, these terms mean more or less the same thing, which describes a motor's ability to start, run, and rest repeatedly. Manufacturers will state duty cycle, which is percent time on, over total time. For example, if an actuator is required to run many cycles with a cumulative on time of 15 minutes out of an hour, that requirement would be a 25% duty cycle. Manufacturers will also state a number of starts per hour. For example, 600 starts per hour or 1,200 starts per hour. There are two types of things that are particularly tough on a motor, high temperatures and starting. Temperature stresses the insulation and starting causes high inrush current. That is why you'll see specifications stated around runtime and number of starts. The third rating is S9 non-periodic duty, also called continuous modulation or class D. Here, basically anything goes. The load, speed, and cycles can vary. Also, there are no requirements to have a period of rest or cool down, so the motor must be able to move continuously. 
Typically, we see S2 on off and S4 modulating duty covered by AC induction motors. DC brushless motors can modulate continuously, but of course can handle the less challenging S4 and S2 duties as well. As you would expect, the level of technology and robustness increases as we go from S2 to S4 to S9 service. That is why it's important to verify the process requirements. If the valve is only opening or closing a couple times an hour, likely S2 service will be just fine. Likewise, S4 duty typically goes up to 1,200 starts per hour. That equates to a start every three seconds. That's pretty frequent and could cover a lot of applications. S9 is there really for control applications where continuous adjustment is the norm. Motor and actuator ratings can get a bit technical, so let's look at a few practical examples of where you might see these service ratings to help with your understanding. For on-off service, we have an example here of the Bettis Torque Plus on a dump valve. In this case, the tank is filling up maybe every few days, and once the fluid level trips a float switch, the actuator opens the valve, dumping off the liquid. The actuator then closes the valve, and the cycle repeats a few days later. For modulating service, we have an example of a Bettis M2CP on a pipe controlling flow rate of drilling fluid down into a well in the Middle East. Again, modulating service is not precise control, but at 1,200 starts per hour, we are able to maintain a basic flow rate in case of where precision is not required. Lastly, we have continuous modulation service. Here we have an example where the Bettis RTS is controlling steam flow in a large building in New York City. Precise control was required, and you can imagine with steam, there may be changing process conditions upstream, fluctuating pressure or temperature, that require an actuator with continuous modulation capabilities. So there you have it, three basic types of service for electric actuators, basic on-off, simple modulation, and continuous control modulation. Again, very important that you understand what the application and process requirements are so that you can get the most cost-effective solution that meets your needs. We hope this video was helpful in giving you an understanding of the different types of motors used in electric actuators, their performance ratings, and how they would fit with typical applications. This is one of the more in-depth and technical videos in the series, so if you'd like to get more information or speak to an Emerson expert, please don't hesitate to contact us. I mentioned that brushless DC motors are the latest technology in electric actuation. To learn more about what's possible with this exciting technology, please join us on the next video.